So one thing that really annoys me, I mean, there are a lot of things that annoy me, it's not just me, but one thing is when you're in line for a free service, how entitled these people are. Like, okay, we, we are fringe livers, you know, we're not part of society, we have no desire to be. And of course, everyone, everyone gets hungry, you know, we have to do things a bit creatively sometimes. But obviously, when you're waiting in line for a free service, it's going to take a fucking long time. Alright? It's... You're getting something that people are choosing to give out, and there's going to be a lot of people there to receive this thing that they don't have to pay for. Alright? So, they really don't need to be bitching about it. Like, in our case, um, we were waiting in line today for food. Um... And my husband is a vegetarian, and I tend to avoid meat as well. Um, but if there's no other alternative, I'm hungry enough to eat it, you know? Anyway, he was trying to see if there was something, if there was something that didn't have meat in it. And the lady um, who was serving the food said, no, there isn't. You know, and we were about to be on our way, and some asshole in line says, Move it on! This isn't Subway! Well, you know what? At Subway, at Subway, no one goes there because there's a fucking pita pit next door. The food and the service at Subway are fucking terrible. Maybe that's where that guy belongs, you know? I hope the next time he does eat at a Subway, someone dips their nuts into whatever it is he orders. So he gets a, a tuna ball sack sub. Because that was really uncalled for. And another thing, people will come up to us when we are in the middle of a conversation, or we, we are clearly busy, like, I'll have this out, and okay, this is actually a very subtle recording device. You can't really tell that it's a recording device. Yeah. Um, so, we'll be, you know, just, standing around talking with each other in a private conversation. I know I have a loud voice, but that is not a fucking invitation for everyone to join the fucking conversation, okay? That is just me being noisy because I don't have an indoor voice. Okay? And that is... That does not mean, oh, hi, I'm inviting everyone and their fucking brother to take part in our conversation. People, I don't know, they tend to like to come up to us and babble at us or try to engage us in conversation. And uh, my husband is polite about it. I'm not. Like, he'll, he'll look at them and nod at them and acknowledge them. I feel that this kind of behavior only encourages the rude-ass behavior. So, I'll be very short and terse with them until they take the hint and go the fuck away. Or, if I get impatient enough, I'll scream in their face to go the fuck away. And then they have to get all butthurt about it when they were the, the interlopers joining in the conversation anyway, when no one wanted them there. So... Just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about living on the fringes that makes people like that so entitled. Alright, and I've noticed actually shades of it with us as well. Like, uh, for instance, if you see a beggar on the street, it's your right to decide whether or not you're going to acknowledge them, whether or not you're going to give them any change, right? Well, sometimes when we don't get change, um, when we don't get anything, Loki decides to call everybody assholes. Like, not not like calling them an asshole as they pass by, just saying, well, there's a bunch of assholes in this place and no one's giving out any change. And it really... Like, I, I understand that point of view very well, because the reason why we're, we were spanging was to try to get money to pay my phone bill, you know, because I want to have the use of my phone, but on the other hand, it's, it's up to them whether or not, firstly, whether or not they have any money in the first place, and secondly, whether or not they're actually going to help us out, and if not, you know, that's fine, I'm usually grateful for whatever we get, but, I don't know, um, and I mean, I, I'm a person I generally think about myself and 
I think about my husband, I think about myself, and that's about it, right? But I, I even I have my limits. Like, I'm not gonna, I, if I get impatient waiting in line for a free thing, I, I actually have a chart with all the foodings in the area. Uh, some are easier to get to than others. This particular one's kind of a pain in the ass, you know, but, uh, I mean, this is our first time going to it. We'll know better next time, won't we, hon? Yeah. <laughs> we overshot the bus stop by, like, a mile. Um, so, we'll know better next time, but for right now, and it's a pain, but we have other options, and we're not going to be an asshole to the other people who are waiting in line for the same fucking thing we are, because, hey, Maybe someone has a food allergy, okay? Maybe, maybe someone has a peanut allergy and all that's being served is peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, right? And they need to take time to figure out if there's anything else at all that they can eat because it's either, it's either irritate their food allergy or go hungry. Oh, here, here's where we need to go. Uh, now let's talk about what I feel entitled to. I feel entitled to have a private, a, pi a private public conversation, which is a conversation with one other person, maybe whoever else I invite to join us, or the other person in the conversation invites to join us, without anyone else butting their nosy asses in, okay? I feel entitled to be able to get the food and stuff, whoops, I have no idea how we're going to navigate this. Whoa! Thanks, Loke. Um, I feel entitled to be able to get the food that we need without a bunch of assholes in line behind us trying to rush us when we don't fucking have any control over the fact that we literally cannot eat certain foods. Okay? Like, the reason that he's a vegetarian is because processed meat or meat made from cows with artificial hormones makes him sick, okay? And the reason that I avoid certain foods is for the same reason. It makes us sick, so you, if you're gonna rush us in line, you are saying that you would rather that we have an allergic reaction to our food or not be able to eat anything, or not be able to get anything that we can eat just so you can get your selfish ass some food. I don't think so, that's not right. And if you're interrupting us in our conversation, you're saying to us, Okay, that you think that whatever you have to say is more important than our privacy, or not even our privacy, just just our, our personal space, us being left the hell alone. And I'm a lot more stringent about this than he is, but, uh... Okay. Hi, so we are, we finally did arrive at City Team, that is this place right here and um, we were told that we could get breakfast lunch and dinner here apparently they do not serve lunch to the public but they do serve dinner from 5.30 to 6 okay that was what they said right 5.30 yeah yeah well we were led to believe that the uh, lunch was also served to the public but it is not so I have to cross that off my hunt my handy little fooding chart. Um, you had some things to say about that while I do that, right? Fuck. <laughs> okay, but you had also said that they... It's just ridiculous. It's, it, it's just a system to get people to apply for things and become part of stupid programs and shit when all we want is just food. Yeah, and like they said that the person at the desk initially said that they did it um, just for residents and that was not on the food. I guess it's good that we're doing this. Because it means that... I mean, the less misinformation that I personally have, the less misinformation that I'll be passing on to others, you know? Yeah. But the only place that we could get uh, a meal would be the Salvation Army at this point.
I guess they do serve breakfast on Sunday. We'll find that out on Sunday. So you have to cross this out. And um, Loki had the hypothesis that they deliberately mislead us yeah. to get us to apply for programs. Yeah. Okay. So I don't feel like going to the Salvation Army for lunch. Really okay. So are we going to go back to the library and and backseat game and eat uh, cookies? Um. Wait, wait. Okay, there is a food pantry. There are two food pantries that are available to us um, that are open from 9 to 4 or 5. So do you want to just go to one of the food pantries? Let's try one of the food pantries. Okay, would you like to go to Sacred Heart at 1381 South 1st Street or St. Joseph's at 80 South Market Street? Sacred Heart. Okay, let's go then. I mean, it's a good thing that we're testing this out, but it's, it, it's annoying when we're hungry, you know. I mean, shitty of them. It, it really is. It's shitty of them because they're they're just trying to get us to apply for their stupid program, you know. And they're not really clear about where the entrance is, you know. They don't say that Our oh it's gonna be this go. it's gonna be this building over here. They're saying it's this building, but they're like oh no the meal's next door. Well I don't know where next door is, okay. I don't. It's on the other side of that wall over there. Oh, it's on the other side of the wall. Yeah. Well, gee, I would have liked to have known that, you know? You know, they put, they put the wall there deliberately so nobody could actually get to the food. I would have liked to have known that before we came all the way over from here. Okay, I mean... It's like a carrot on a stick bullshit. That's what it is. Carrot and a stick? Yeah. Carrot and stick bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you completely. So... I mean, we can try to come here for dinner during an emergency, but I don't want to get too dependent on any system or any program, which is why I want to utilize, like, multiple things and not really have us registered anywhere. I'll tell you one thing. Next person that asks me to put my Social Security number down, if they say we can't give you services if you refuse, I'm going to say, well, you know what? Fuck this. We're out of here. Yeah. I'll just pretend I don't know my social security number, because that, I mean, that's embarrassing, really. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay, so, on the other side of that wall, <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, okay, his wall climbing skill is excellent. I could actually make it over that wall, but not in these shoes. And yeah, this is utterly and completely ridiculous, but thankfully... Loki's got excellent mapping skills and he knows where the bus stop is from here. Yes, I do. So we're just gonna go down to First Street. And hey, there's a water fountain. Let's see if it works. Oh my god, the water fountain works. Can you pour out the crap that's in there, please? We, we got Kool-Aid mix, we thought we'd try it out. Um, it's awful, but it, it was a nice gesture, you know. And we thank the person who gave it to us. It was very friendly of him. See, I mean, there's some things I don't mind being approached for. Like, for instance, Bubba is a friend. Okay, so I don't mind if he says hi to us in the morning, because he knows us. And sometimes, you know, he'll, he'll offer us stuff, and he'll, you know, he always tries to make sure that we're doing okay. Or maybe he just tries to make sure that I'm doing okay, since when we met I was crying my freaking eyes out. Like a noob. Like a noob getting murked over and over again. Noobs who get murked over and over again don't have time to cry their eyes out, because they're busy dying. <laughs> okay, fine, the player behind the noob is getting murked over and over again. You know, I don't even care that this is taking forever, I'm just going to stand here and use up their water. Like a little douchebag, because honestly, I think this is a douchey program. They're like, oh, we serve stuff for residents. You have to become a resident. Well, guess what? We don't want to become a resident because we don't want that kind of structure. It's stressful enough to just have the structure of, well, meal time is served from this time to this time. I mean, there's some places, like there's some churches that you go in there and you beg them for food and they will give you something, okay? But you can't do that every day or they get to know you. you know, like if you do it like once every few months or so, it's fine. 
but I don't want to become like that person who always goes to the same spot for food all the time. Because, the, I mean, the more often they see you, the higher the chances they're going to turn you down, right? The more often you ask for stuff, the higher the chances that people are going to think, oh, well, you're not really doing anything for yourself. Whereas if they just see you, like, once or twice, they'll think, oh, well, that person probably just needs to pick me up this one time and they'll help you out, right? Yeah, we're on the way here for 30 million years. Okay. Loki. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to go pee. Okay. There's some interesting graffiti here too. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna guard you. Or you could just go like in that, in that tower thing over there. <laughs> like, honestly, there's. Okay, now he's on the other side of the railroad tracks. But these people, they're not that helpful, you know? If you're really gonna, if you're really gonna help someone, you're not gonna whinge about them not being part of your program. In fact, you'll just like, oh, you need help? Well, here, have this. You know, don't make them sign up for something. I mean, even if it's just for the sake of keeping track of, of who comes by, you know, you just like, what you do? is you make a tally mark. Okay. You see a person, make a tally mark. Make an another person approaches you, make another tally mark. Person asks for food multiple times, make multiple tally marks. Okay? This is a very simple system. It's simple, it's anonymous. It allows people to get what they need, what they want, and you're not infringing on the privacy in any way. Why don't people do that? Meanwhile, on our adventures, we have managed to get completely lost because somehow we did not decide that going back the way we came would be a good idea. And now we're wandering around a steel plant trying to get back to a bus stop. Which, there don't really seem to be many of those around here. Okay, we gotta make a decision though. If we're gonna keep going that way, or wait, we might end up doing that on default because that's a freeway entrance. <laughs> yeah, um, we were walking through a steel plant and saw a couple people that kind of looked like, like they were looking for someone, you know, they were in cars, they were reading a newspaper, but they looked really, you know, they looked like they were waiting for someone who was not us, and they looked at us kind of suspiciously. Or maybe I just watched too much burn notice. <laughs> But we are finding a lot of cans, which is great for our recycling thing. I love watching him crush them under his heel like that. I'm gonna name you Peter. <laughs> well, we are looking for a bus stop. Oh uh, no, honey, I think this is actually the freeway. Yep, this is the freeway, so that's the sidewalk. This sucks, like a lot. Oh. This really sucks. We are lost. Because yeah, technically I know where we are, but thing is, is while I know where we are, I do not know how to use that knowledge to get to where we need to be. That sucks. Oh, my feet. Huh. So we are somewhere on Old Base Hill Highway near 101. And once these cars pass, we could just like cross the... Oh, yeah, we could cross the street. Shit. There's that car coming around the corner. And now there's a bunch of other asshole cars here. What the fuck? Across part of the way. It's a bunch of 18 wheelers, look. I do not feel good about this. What? Oh. Enter a 
recycling buyback chatter. Huh. Yeah. Well. Were you yelling at me to look out? Yeah. Yeah, um. I kind of figured if I ran, I'd make it. This sucks. Like, see, this is another thing I hate about human society, is that everything is cars right now. There's nowhere really where a pedestrian can go. That just, I mean, cars were made to be convenient, but this is just so inconvenient. It's not a pedestrian friendly area, and there's a lot of areas like that. Like, they think, oh, you have to get this, this steel box for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, tens of thousands of dollars. And, and learn how to operate it so that you can go places like a quote-unquote normal person but uh that's uh 